Thank you. Uh, can I have my slides, please? Okay, so I am here to tell you why I trust Contura Vision. So I'll just take you through some uh, presentations of speakers, both Indian and international, about what they have to say about Contura Vision, and then I'll come to the basic things why I place my trust in this technology. Can I have the sound, please? Do it again. No sound. So the benefit of Contour is that now that we're able to treat every uh, irregularity on the cornea is that we're able to get our patients seeing better than they've ever seen in their life. So in the clinical trial uh, in the United States, uh, two thirds of the patients saw one line better than their best ever corrected vision with glasses or contact lenses. And a third of the patients saw two lines better than they've ever seen in their life, which is two lines better than 2020. If we have a camera, we have a very precise lens that has a perfect surface to it, and the image is very clear. Corneas aren't made that way, and nature has developed into very good structures, but there are micro irregularities in all of our corneas. And until now, we weren't able to fix those. Contura is the latest advance that we have in the field of laser refractive surgery. As we all know, the science of medicine is constantly improving, making advancements all the time. One such advancement is Contura Vision, where we're able to make unique treatments that are specific to each individual's eyes. We were chosen to be one of eight sites in the country to start using Contura Vision when it was released. Personally, I'm very proud of the fact that I've been asked to help train the other surgeons that are going to be using this technology. We were involved in the clinical trials about five or six years ago. It was very obvious to all of us involved that this was something new, this is something different, this is something that's going to make a difference compared to what we've been using. Contour Vision is a great new technology. This, this allows us to do treatments uh, that are unique to each individual patient and each individual eye. Like a fingerprint is unique to you, so are your eyes. 2020 is considered normal vision. Many of our contour vision patients are seeing better than normal. Our patients are achieving phenomenal results with our latest LASIK technology, contour vision LASIK. This topography guided procedure scans up to 22,000 points on the cornea and smooths out imperfections and irregularities on the surface. We're proud to be the first center to use this in Indiana, and with that, have the most experience. So, while the world is talking about Contura, when we look at the Indian scenario, and a patient comes to us, what is it that the patient wants from us? And the question is only one. He wants the best vision. And a technique which gives him the best vision is undoubtedly the best. So his concern is that I should have a sharp vision, no halos and glares, no loss of contrast. That's it. That's primary. Of course, if you could add on things like bladeless, flapless, dry eyes, it is to an advantage. But these I would label as secondary issues. So when we talk about Contura, and like my previous speakers talked, and the international faculty also talked, as I showed you right now, we have three components. The aspheric treatment, treatment on the visual axis, and correction of corneal irregularities. When we talk of aspheric treatment, we assume that all platforms today be it wavefront, be it smile or contour, are doing an aspheric treatment where the 
central bundle of light and the peripheral bundle of light is coming to a point focus on the retina despite the fact that you have flattened the cornea more in the center than the periphery. Right? So this is standard for all. Nothing special in Contura about this. Treatment on the visual axis. This actually makes all the difference. Why? Because so far most of the technologies were tracking the pupil and they were basing their treatment on the center of the pupil. They had no way actually to base the treatment on the visual axis. We know that if this is your line of sight, visual axis, and if you are if you're seeing from the side, your vision would not be clear, and it would be finely precise when it is on the visual axis, so it makes sense to get the treatment onto the visual axis. How does Contura do it? It's, it's not a great rocket science. You are basically using a topolizer, and in the topolizer, you're looking at a point focus, which is your line of sight or the visual axis, and you're collecting data around it. That all machines are doing these days. Now the question was, how do you get this data onto the cornea when the patient is lying down on the table under the laser machine? So at that time, the laser system captures the data on the cornea, aligns it to the data from the topolizer, does your cyclotorsion, freezes the data, and of course it will track the pupil center because that is the most obvious thing to track, but it will give you an offset. How much is your visual line offsetting in the X and Y meridian to the center of the pupil? So the pupil size also matters because what we know what is called a pupil centroid shift, which means that at a certain pupil size, you capture the data outside in your diagnostic area. And on the table, you have to bring the illumination to that level that the pupil is the same size and the center of the pupil is the same as it was when you captured the data outside. So at that point, the data will freeze and you'll get an offset on the visual line. And of course, it makes sense that if you treat on the visual axis, you would bound to be getting a better vision. And that is what the previous speaker had shown, that you would get a visual equity beyond 2020 or beyond 6.6. That means 6.5 or even 6.4. It corrects corneal abrasions or irregularities. Now, this is the natural sequence of the treatment that if you can measure the irregularities on the cornea, we know cornea is not a perfect surface. They are micro irregularities, but they are micro. Not very significant at times, but yes, if you correct them, your treatment quality and vision quality gets enhanced. So, if you can track the data from the topolizer onto the eye, you can precisely treat those points and make the corneal surface more smooth. And if you can make it more smooth, you are bound to get a better visual equity. In our experience with the Contura, we have had excellent results, which has been substantiated even by the previous speaker with negligible halos and glares. In high probes, Contura becomes very essential. Why? Because high probes have usually a large angle kappa. Kappa is the angle between the pupil axis and the visual axis. And if you treat on the visual axis, you would have contrast problems, and if you can treat on the visual axis, the contrast problems which are usually associated with hypropic treatments 
are almost weaned out. So, the two top technologies available in the market today is Contura and Smile and both are vying for the top platform and the ophthalmologists, quite a few here, would be wondering which technology should I choose? So here I am going to give you my reasons of which technology I decided to choose and first is I will give you a comparison of the FDA study of Contura and Smile because both have got FDA recognition and both have their data on the FDA websites. So look at this. Both are correcting up to eight diopters, but Contura is FDA approved for up to three diopters, whereas Smile is just approved for half a diopter in the FDA study. This data shows that 2020 vision, Contura had 93%, Smile had 88%. 2012, Contura 34%, Smile, they did not record this. Loss of one line, Contura nil, Smile 2.6%, gained one line, Contura 31%, Smile 22.8%. This is not my data, this is FDA data on the FDA website. We also know that with Smile, there is a slower visual recovery. This is what the data says. Loss of two lines at one week is 3.9%. Loss of more than two lines, sorry. Two lines loss is 1.8%. This is with smile. One line loss is 22.5%. Almost one quarter of your patients have a one line loss at one week with smile as per FDA data. And if you look at this data now, 28.2% had a loss of one or more line of best corrected spectacle equity. At one month it improved. So you can see 28% of the people at one week had loss of one line or more, which you as refractive surgeons find it very difficult to digest and ex your patients will find it very difficult to accept. Why is it that there is, sorry, I'll just go back. Why is it that there is this difference between a contura or any uh, flap surgery versus smile? We know that when we pick up a flap in with a uh, FS200 or any femto laser, there are a lot of gas bubbles in the interface and sometimes those gas bubbles even tend to break out through the epithelium. To reduce that, in SMILE, they reduce the energy of the gas, energy of the laser so that the gas bubble formation is less and the space between the two deliveries becomes high that means you're using a 4.5 micron spacing as a result you have a large tissue bridges in between and then you have to mechanically break those tissue bridges both above and below causing a lot of manipulation with your instruments lot of cytokine release and subsequently probably a lot of reaction and delayed recovery of course now people are commenting that they are started getting better visions and better recovery with some changes in their energy levels. Corneal biomechanics, some people say it's better in one technology, but there are so many reports which say it doesn't really make a difference. Both are similar. Corneal hysteresis, 
this study says it makes no difference some studies are saying that it does make a difference probably there could be an element of industry driven papers on such topics however when we say what is smile all about this could slide could be a little critical uh i would say smile is essentially just an aspheric treatment that's it it doesn't have a hyperopia correction module as yet it does not deal in pure cylindrical corrections as yet it has no eye tracker and you have to do the centering manually centering manually and at the center of the pupil you can't get close to the visual acuity because manually you just don't know where the visual acuity is there is comparatively no wow effect and that is why in this presentation i am putting before you that this is the reason why i trust contour vision thank you so much